Hello, my name is Claire Markell, and we are going to be over the historical timeline of bilingual education and um, the court appeals and laws that allowed English, English language learners to progress in their educational processes. The first court case we will be looking at is Brown v. Board of Education. In 1954, the U.S. Supreme Court outlawed segregated schools as inconsistent with edu equal education. It established for the push of, more, of a more equal education system. Parents did not feel strongly about this decision because it claimed that the equal treatment for their children, or in other words, submersing them in a mainstream classroom, was designed for English background children, meant unequal opportunities to succeed. This case is important to bilingual education because it established the separate but equal policy. Students were diff with different ethnicities, um, but the case stated that they should be granted equal opportunities, and this later paved the way for the equal opportunities for ELL students and the education available to them. So our next act is the Civil Rights Act of 1964. President JFK received strong opposition for this act from Southern members of Congress, but it was finally signed into law by President LBJ. Um, Title VI of this act prohibited sex, race, and national origin discrimination in government-funded programs. The Civil Rights Act of 1964 opened gateways to more equal education for everyone, even though it didn't directly affect bilingualism. Once it was equal, education departments slowly began to progress, including equal, equal opportunities that will eventually be able to ELL students. If Title IX prohibited the segregation of national origin, the non-English students would not be discriminated against, which means that they should not be left without aid with language barriers. The school districts that receive federal aid are required to ensure that minority students are getting the same access, access to programs as non-minorities. So the Bilingual Education Act was enacted in 1968. Title VII of the Elementary and Secondary Education Act is actually also considered the Bilingual Education Act. Its goal is to improve access to bilingual education of English language learner students. It stipulated that the federal government would provide financial assistance for innovative bilingual programs. Funding would be provided for the development of such programs and for implementation, staffing, staff training, um, everything that could aid in those programs. Uh, this Bilingual Education Act opened gateways to easier bilingual education. With the um, funding from the government, it was easier to get the staff needed um, and get the maintenance that was required to upkeep bilingual education programs to assist and facilitate better learning for minority and English, English learners. Another Supreme Court case um, of Law versus Nichols came about in 1970. This was the case that um, Edward Steinman discovered that one of his clients' his children was failing school um, because he was not able to understand the language of instruction. Um, this U.S. Supreme Court case challenged inadequate educational care and instruction given to the language minority student. Um, it came about that this mistreatment of the student violated Title VI of the Civil Rights Act on the basis of race and national origin. Uh, the school district countered that its policies were not discriminatory because it offered the same instruction to all students regardless of national origin, um, and it claimed that the lack of English profici proficiency was not the district's fault. So that was what... Um, the district came back and fought law on, um, and this was important because this lawsuit brought attention to the needs of minorities in the school system, um, and it brought about the fact that without proper aids, ELL students cannot succeed, and it is important that the, stu that the teachers do everything they can um, to aid and help the English, English language learner.
so the next um, case that we are going to be looking at is the Cerna versus per Portalis Municipal Schools. Um, this took place in 1974. Its goal was to uphold the right to bilingual education um, for Mexi Mexican American children. It fought for Mexican American bilingual education. Um, and this, this was important because Mexican Americans were supposed to be granted the equal education based off of Title VI and the Civil Service Act. Um, but this court appeals process was based on the fact that they did not. Um, it was important because this case brought, uh, brought to light the fight for Mexican American educational freedom. Without this court case, Mexican Americans would not be able to receive proper bilingual education. In 1974, Congress passes the Equal Educational Opportunities Act. Um, with the passing of this Equal Educational Opportunities Act, the law decisions became a U.S. code. Um, looking at what the law decisions are, it ensured that bilingual education would be mandated in all schools where at least 25 LEP children of the same minority language group were enrolled in two consecutive grades in elementary or middle school. Um, there was a lot of backlash on this law um, decision because a lot of schools did not like it, and a lot of um, a lot of parents didn't like it either. But with the passage, the law decisions were able to enforce bilingual education mandates in the district. Um, with this rule, it was easier to enforce those bilingual education protocols to help ELL students. So looking again at the law regulations, the law regulations actually were established and put into practice in 1981. Um, after learning of what the law regulations were in the last slide, bilingual education would be mandated in all schools. Um, this was important because it did regulate the bilingual education programs um, in, in more schools. And with the passing of this, these regulations, more and more schools were, are more accepting of bilingual education. Um, the, a lot of the reactions were negative, but support came from only in the National Education Association and the National Association for Bilingual Learners. Um, this just further proved the fight, um, the long fight for bilingual education. So in 1981, another case was the Castaneda versus Pickard. Um, it utilized the Equal Educational Opportunities Act. Um, based on Section 1703F of the EEOA, requires student districts, requires school districts to take appropriate actions to overcome language barriers that impede equal participation by its students in its instructional programs. Um, so this case fully relied on the Equal Educational Opportunities Education Act and not the law case to determine appropriate actions for English learners. Um, this case was very important um, and it looks at the way we approach bilingual education accommodations and use the Ed Equal Opportunities Education Act um, to approach appropriate instruction for bilingual programs um, to further help English, English language learners get the appropriate accommodations that they need. In 1982, another case was the U.S. versus Texas case. Um, this uh, first, first off required bilingual education statewide in grades K through 12. Eventually it was overturned so the state of Texas was not required to push for bilingual education anymore. Um, this case is very important due to the fight for bilingual education. With the overturning of this case, the state of Texas was not required to ensure bilingual education to students anymore. Um, and this was, again, just very important because we see that um, still that divide of bilingual education and the push to regulate it to help ELL students. In 1984, we see that the Bilingual Education Act was reauthorized. Through this reauthorization, um, we can see th um, that 
it allowed for more modest funding in developmental, bilingual, and special alternative English programs. Um, and this reauthorization of the Bilingual Education Act allowed for more mandated approach approaches to bilingual education to allow for better programs for ELL students. So those are all of the important laws and court cases that um, I thought were very important in the um, process of regulating bilingual education. Um, and this is the work cited for all of my slides, and I hope you enjoyed. Thank you.